This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to answer the question, does Bitcoin mining waste energy? And the answer is no, Bitcoin mining actually uses energy quite efficiently. For those who don't know what Bitcoin mining is, it's basically running what's called a SHA-256 hash algorithm where you have an input like this, for example, and then you change a couple numbers and you keep hashing it to get a certain output and you're looking for a certain number of leading zero. So this is what Bitcoin mining machines do. They do many, many hashes every second. In fact, they do more than a trillion hashes every second on the network. Now, how much energy is required to do one trillion hashes? In other words, one terahash by a Bitcoin mining rig? Well, the amount of energy has gone down over time. We can see back in January of 2009 when Satoshi launched Bitcoin, it required approximately 877,000 joules per terahash. So joules is a measurement of energy. Terahash is how many hashes. In other words, how many times we can repeat this in a second for a certain amount of energy. And we can see that the amount of energy used to create one terahash has been falling over time. In fact, it's fallen an incredible amount from 877,000 down to about 21, 22 for the latest Bitcoin mining rigs. In fact, Bitcoin mining has become 5,814% more efficient, more energy efficient over the last eight years. Now, was this increase in energy efficiency mandated by some government or regulatory group? Of course it wasn't. The free market actually works if you let it do its thing. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit that like and subscribe buttons in order to help to support the channel. So that's the energy efficiency piece of Bitcoin mining. But when you said that Bitcoin mining wastes energy, maybe you were not talking about energy efficiency. Maybe you were just saying that you don't like Bitcoin. And of course, that's your right. But do you have the right to tell me that I can't like Bitcoin? Were you saying that you personally don't think that Bitcoin mining is a good use of energy because that's a completely different thing than saying it's not energy efficient. And we gen we demonstrated using joules per terahash how energy efficient Bitcoin mining actually is. And it uses these very specialized machines. Instead of using CPUs or GPUs, it uses ASICs. So it's actually incredibly energy efficient. But maybe you're just saying you don't like Bitcoin and you don't like energy being used toward Bitcoin. So what you're basically talking about is banning a certain use of energy. And so the question would be in a modern society, who gets to decide this sort of thing? Some sort of energy czar? Should I be able to tell my neighbor what to do? Should we give one person or a panel so much power? In other words, tell, the ability to tell people what they can use energy for and what they cannot use energy for. Does this become sort of a command uh, centralized economy like, like the uh, Soviet Union or like China, for example? And if given, if we, if we nominate an energy czar person or panel, can this power be abused? And of course, if it can be abused, it will be abused. The other question is, will an energy czar make better decisions than the collective hive mind of a free market? I have my own ideas about what uses of energy should be banned. So I personally think that blow drying your dog's hair after a bath is a terrible waste of energy. And this is a hill that I'm willing to die on. Not actually, uh, but because I also happen to be a dog owner. Fortunately, in Colorado, dog's hair dries very quickly. We don't need to use blow dryers like you might in a more humid environment. But I still think that blow drying your dog's hair after a bath is very first world privilege. It's a complete waste of, waste of energy. And I'm, I'm personally going to put a stop to it if you elect me senator. Here's a perfect example of energy being wasted. And it's quite, it's really quite disgusting to see. And they try to make it justifiable by making the, the dog really cute, which is obviously just government propaganda. I think while we're at it too, though, we should ban green politicians from flying on private jets. So for example, flying to Davos on your private jet to talk about climate change is a little bit hypocritical in my opinion. Or maybe we could, have, we could come to a, an agreement like this. You can blow dry your dog's hair. You can fly your own airplane. You can ride on another airplane. You can display Christmas lights. You can waste electricity watching cat videos and fighting online. And in exchange, maybe you'll just let me use my Bitcoin. And in fact, Bitcoin mining uses less energy than Christmas lights. I also happen to like Christmas lights. I have nothing against them and I also often dis display them as well. But Bitcoin mining does use less energy than Christmas lights. I don't hear anyone talking about banning Christmas lights. So why do I like Bitcoin? Why do I like it as much as you like blow drying your dog's hair? It's because I believe that Bitcoin will hold its purchasing power 
better than the US dollar well over time. And that's why I like to store my savings in Bitcoin. Whenever I get some, some money coming in, I pay my taxes, I spend what I need to on essentials, and then I save the excess in Bitcoin. You can see how your savings, if you park them in the US dollar, they go down over time. So when I was a kid, you could buy a McDonald's Big Mac for about 50 cents. Today, it costs $5 or more. So the US dollar is not a very good store of value. By contrast, Bitcoin seems to hold its value quite well over long periods of time. It could be a little volatile on a month to month or year to year basis. But if you're talking about saving for retirement like I am, I think it's a very good store of value. And it's certainly much better than something like the US dollar. I also like Bitcoin because it's nice to be able to choose where to spend or send your money without other people, especially bureaucrats, telling you what you can do and what you cannot do. So for example, in Nigeria in 2020, there were these protesters protesting police brutality and the government ended up killing these unarmed protesters and firing on them. And then to add insult to injury, they ended up, the central bank of Nigeria ended up freezing the bank accounts of these same protesters and their families. And so Bitcoin is money that could not have been frozen by the Nigerian government or the central bank. Bitcoin is money that cannot be debased. Central banks can't print more of it, and so it holds its purchasing power over time. And Bitcoin is money that cannot be censored. And I think that's at least a good, as good a use of energy as Christmas lights. The last question, of course, is should Bitcoin move from proof of work to proof of stake in order to save energy? You'll often hear this from people like the Ethereum people, for example, or the Cardano people who want you to buy their tokens instead. But I think this would be a big mistake because proof of stake can easily be gamed or captured, unlike proof of work. Proof of stake is basically the more coins you have, the more votes you get, the more you control the protocol. In other words, it's ruled by the rich. And we have, we've already experienced ruled by the rich in the current system. And it's not a pretty thing. So I don't know why anyone would want to replace the fiat monetary system with another version of it with proof of stake. Bitcoin mining, proof of work mining is absolutely necessary to preserve the neutrality of Bitcoin and the fairness of the overall monetary network. And it's very important to notice that Bitcoin miners do not control Bitcoin. This is propaganda. The answer, the, the Bitcoin miners actually answer to the full, full nodes, anyone who runs a Bitcoin full node like you or me. And so Bitcoin miners don't control it. In other words, they're sort of industrial processors who order the transactions and, and package them up, but they really can't change the rules or do anything like this. And so proof of work is a very innovative system. It uses energy, but it uses it in a very useful manner. And that's why I like Bitcoin. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.